This started with an idea. Somehow, if we were given the opportunity, we could become more. If given the place and the time, we could build a nation where everyone could become more. We prayed for favor. We believed that out of many, we could become one. Though America was never simple, our nation did not give in or give up. We crawled, strived for dreams and freedoms we believed in, fought to hold hands as we learned to stand on our own. We are brothers and sisters. Our dreams are not dimmed by our tears. We have stumbled, will not fall. It began with the idea that beliefs should not be dictated. Freedom was to be shared. Worship was the right of the individual, not the responsibility of the government. All of these things were self-evident. We knew it in our hearts. They were inalienable for everyone, endowed by our Creator, God-given. On this day, we remember our freedom, and we thank the God who provided it. May God bless America. Morning, how are you? Morning, good to see you. Um, happy Independence Weekend, whatever that means. Can't believe you wanted to break free from Britain, you know, all those years ago, and then allowed me into the country after that. So uh, it's good that you've forgiven us. And uh, well, if you thought we were Irish, that's right, not British. So, but anyway, yeah. Hope you've had a good weekend. Um, beautiful morning this morning, a bit uh, muggy, but um, it's going to be a lovely day and hopefully you can enjoy that. We, we're here to celebrate. Uh, we celebrate in so many ways, don't we? Um, we had all the fireworks and we had everything going off um, and it, it was fantastic. We watched the Macy's fireworks on, on TV and uh, yeah, it's, it was just tremendous to see. And I wonder... If we came to church expecting fireworks, if we came expecting to find Jesus just exploding everywhere, or do we come thinking it's a bit of a damp squid and it's actually burnt out and, and nothing's going to happen? Well, today we're talking about celebrating that God has taken us from disgrace to grace, that Jesus changes everything, and he changes everything across the world. So stand with me. Let's worship. Let's praise him. Let's lift our voices to him. And let's enjoy worshiping our God. This is called All Over the World. Shouted for joy, shouted for joy. And looking back through history, your people, they have always had a song they must sing, a song they must sing. We are the people of God. We'll sing your song.
we want his name to be praised and we need to sing that out and sometimes we don't even need to do it with words we just need to sing it out by living our lives in a way that glorifies him and today we want to remember that at one stage we we were lost and then jesus came and rescued us this is zach williams song rescue story of my despair There you were In the shadow Holding out your hand You met me there And now where would I be Without you Where would I be Jesus You were the voice in the desert Calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You were my rescue story, lifted me up from the ashes, carried my soul from death to life, bringing me from glory to glory. You were my rescue story. can't live without grace. Grace is a state of well-being and ease. That's easy. God's riches at Christ's expense. Like grace, like saying, like Thanksgiving grace? Yeah, I, I know that. It's like when you get something, you appreciate something. Grace 
means. I've heard it around before, but I don't know. Could you tell me, please? Undeserved forgiveness. Define grace. It's kind of a hard word to put into words. Humble yourself and be grateful for everything that's given to you in this life. Our grace is a girl's name. I, I need to call a girl named Grace. They're pretty cute. Grace is God's compassion. If you're talking religion, you know, I mean, religion is it's grace. Grace is Benevolence that's that's not particularly deserved or asked for, maybe. Mercy. Mercy. Somebody who's graceful is somebody that's kind of poised. Yeah, confident, like a certain. You know, to be honest, uh, Grace never thought about it. Uh, God gives grace. Um, you know, it's His grace that I have salvation. Um, grace? I don't really know. <laughs> Do you know? Mm -mm. I don't know. <laughs> Please stand. I'm going to sing Jesus Loves Me. i 
Please be seated. What a great song. Jesus loves me. And often if you're like me, every time someone says Jesus loves me, I think back to, the, to that um, hymn and that chorus that we had learned at Sunday school. Jesus loves me, this I know, because the Bible tells me so. But we're living in a world today where the Bible is not telling people that that's the case, because people aren't reading their Bible. They think it, it doesn't make any sense. They think it has no relevance for today. But today we're talking about Jesus changes everything. Jesus changes the landscape. He changes the world. He changes our lives. And I want to read to you this morning, just from Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. I wonder if I ask you this morning, what has been the biggest or what have been the biggest changes in your life? What would you say? What's the biggest changes in your life? What's the first thing that comes to mind? For, for, for me, the first thing that comes to mind is moving to America. That was a big change. Also, I think that my waistline has changed as well. And that's a constant struggle to try and, and, and keep that under control. But I wonder what you would say. What have been the biggest changes that have happened in, in your life. I'm sure you can think of many. And I'm not just thinking about the changes that we can all relate to in the past few months when our lives have become very different. Today's scripture is a powerful one, as all scripture is. And it's a life changing statement because it's all about God's grace. It's all about the grace and the love of Jesus for us. By grace, you have been saved. Not through coming to church. Not through good works. But through Jesus. Through Jesus' love for us. Through faith. It's a gift from God for all of us. It's a gift. We all love gifts. God has given us a gift. And he gives it freely and he gives it without asking for anything in return from us except our love and our devotion. Jesus changes everything. Truer words have never been spoken. God took me from being a person in disgrace to a person that was living full of grace. His love for me made the change possible when I was willing to accept that gift and take it from him. You know, for so many Christians and so many of us today, I think we tend to believe that grace is just connected to our salvation. Grace only happens when, when you get saved. But grace is much more than just how we come to Christ. It's actually as part of our entire Christian journey. Because God's grace doesn't stop at salvation. God's grace continues day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour. Our journey with Jesus is to be fueled by the grace of God. Because the grace of God transforms. And if Jesus changes everything, then Jesus has to be part of us every minute of every day. Think about this. We were lost. We had no hope. And in that place of despair in our, in our life, God poured out his amazing grace to us. Not when we were worthy of it. When we had no hope. We can do nothing for him unless it comes ultimately from his grace. The Bible tells us in Philippians 2 and verse 13, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. God's grace 
is in us and it is urging us to do the things that please him. I've read for many years, Rick Warren has been someone that I've read and followed and, and watched um, videos and YouTubes and whatever I can get my hands on. Over my years as a Christian, he's been one of these people who have always stood out as someone who is leading in the proper way. And his purpose-driven life and the purpose-driven church helped me so much to formulate a lot of my, my thinking. He says that grace gives us so many more benefits in life that we often overlook or take for granted. This is what he shares. First of all, we're saved by grace. The only way to heaven is through the doorway of grace. You can't earn it. You can't work for it. You can't buy it. We read that in today's scripture. It's freely given. We are forgiven by grace. Though we don't deserve it, God wipes our slate clean by his grace. Isaiah 43, 25 tells us that. He, we're sustained by his grace. God never asks us to do anything he doesn't give you and me the ability and the power to do. The po that power and ability is called grace. He gives you what you need. Philippians 2, 13 outlines that for us. Psalm 147 and verse 3 says, we are healed by grace. God heals the broken hearts. Many times have you felt God's touch on your life when things have been hard. He binds up our wounds, even though, again, we don't deserve it. It's all through grace. I love this one. Matthew 11, 28 to 30 tells us this, that we are liberated by grace. We're liberated. Today we're celebrating Independence Weekend. But my friends, we're liberated by grace through the grace and love of God. Our relationship with Jesus isn't just a bunch of chores we're supposed to do. Do this, do that. I often thought when I grew up that Jesus had this massive long list. They kept being pulled out every day and said, you must do this and you have to do that and you can't do this and you can't do that. That's not liberation. Jesus gave us his grace to liberate us. It's all about resting in the Lord, knowing what he's already done for us. So this morning I want to ask you, in your Christian life, are you resting in Christ? Are you resting with him? We're also given something that many of us don't believe that we have. We're given talents and gifts by God. By his grace. God gives us each the ability to do something well. Now, some of us might sit there and scratch our heads and think, I can't think of what that would be. But God gives each of us, there's no exceptions, the ability to do something well and to use those abilities for him. Again, Romans 12 and 6, you can find that. We're used by grace. God uses us to fulfill his purposes in this world. This is the greatest privilege, my friends. When Jesus changes everything, he changes us and says, come with me and change the world. Wow. For years I used to watch at home when, when it was politically correct to watch these things, Miss World. All right? Now it's no longer politically correct. But nearly everybody came up and says, what do you want to do? And I always remember, we always sat in the house and we always went, she wants to change the world. And that was always the statement, I want to change the world, I want to make a difference. But that is supposed to be the battle cry for us as Christians. What do you want to do? Why do you believe in Christ? Why do you come to church? Why do you follow Jesus? Our first thing off our mind should be because we want to change the world. And our world starts here, and our world starts in Hutchison, and it moves out from, from there. But it has to start here. It has to start here. We're also kept saved.
by his grace. You know, we can't lose our salvation because it's a gift of God. God gives us this gift. If we could earn it, then we could lose it, correct? If we could earn something, then we can lose it. That's not the way it is with God. And Jude 1, verse 24, talks about that. And then this is the other one that really stands out to me. We are transformed by grace. Transformed by grace. Through his grace, God makes us new through the renewing of our minds and our bodies. Romans 12, verse 2. You see, these aren't just words coming from Rick Warren or from Keith. These are words coming from the Word of God. You are transformed because of God's love for you, because of His grace. And we take it for granted. And in fact, sometimes we just push it to the background and think, really? Really? Hmm? But we are transformed by grace because Jesus changes everything. We're even matured by grace. God working in us, making us more like Jesus, happens not because we earned it or by our own effort, but because you've got it, his grace. Because of his grace. You see, without God, we are hopeless. We're alone. Are there times when you feel lost? Probably at that time, In your life, you feel more distant from God, from Jesus, when when you feel lost. But listen to what Jesus says. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 19 and verse 10. You see, God is coming to seek us out. Now, that can be scary, can't it? God's coming to find us, you know. It's like that hide and seek that we played whenever we were young. You know, you go, go and you hide. And it's funny because actually we can't hide from God. And it's a bit like when you see a little three-year-old or whatever who wants to play hide and you count to 20 and you turn around and they're standing in the corner in full view with their eyes closed thinking that you can't see them because they can't see you. And, you know, that, that's the way we need to, to, to think about what it's like with God. We can't hide from him. We can't go into a corner. He sees everything that's happening. But you know something? He loves us no matter what situation that we're in. He comes to seek us out. He's looking for us so that he can rescue us. That's why Jesus came. He rescued me in my late teens. He turned my life around. He gave me a purpose. He poured his grace into my miserable, out-of-control life. Those are not the words that are used at that time, but that's what it is when you think back on it. My friends, I have no idea what any of us, any of you are going through or what your relationship with God is like right now. But I want to tell you this. Take this assurance You can never be so lost that God's grace can't find you. Wow. I'm so pleased with that. That should make us all smile. In fact, we should all get a whooping and a hollering when we've known. We can never be so lost that God's grace can't find us. It's amazing. If you want to have hope in your life, you find it through God's amazing grace. I didn't, and I don't deserve his grace. But he gives it to me anyway, because that's my God. Hebrews 4, 16 tells us, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Life without God, without Jesus, is no life at all. New life is promised to us. When we surrender our lives 
to the will of God. You know, I always thought my life was great. You see, in your teenage years, did you not think your life was great? You hadn't a cure in the world. Teenagers are sitting here going, really? Not a cure in the world? I don't know whether I'm starting back to school. I don't know whether I'm going for a few days, no days, some days. I don't know whether I'm online in person. I don't know whether I'm wearing masks and not wearing masks. I don't know whether I'm allowed to eat my dinner. I don't know whether we can have recess, blah, blah, blah. Oh, stress. Stress level is up here. Some of us don't know will we ever get back to work. Some of us can't even get traveling for our work the way we used to. And don't our wives know that? Yeah. Things have changed. But I thought my life was great. Until I met Jesus. And then I really started to live. I, I want to do this little illustration with you. And I hope that I've got the error to do, to do this. Life is like a balloon. Okay? What do you think about that? Life is like this balloon. Isn't it pretty? You love to go into a room for a birthday party. And if you've seen 20, 30, 40 of these hanging up like this here, you would go, wow. There's something missing in it, isn't there? I mean, if you walked into a room and you just seen these hanging up, you would go, what? What's that all about? And this is like our life. It's, it's pretty, it's a pretty color. But it's not much good at doing anything. I'm going to let you in that little secret. I was going to use one of those blow up, you know, bouncy ball, you know, you sort of hold on then you go, I tried to blow one up the other day. It would not have been pretty online. Um, probably I'd have had to get oxygen up here. But I was, and I was getting this little bit. So I changed my mind and went to a balloon, okay? But it's not much good until something happens to it. And that is that something brings it to life, really. <coughs> Hear the sound effects there with the screen, didn't it? <coughs> it's changing, isn't it, a bit? Now, how far could I blow this up before it goes pop? Wyatt, do you think it's going to bust? Do you think it's going to explode? Maybe, yeah. Oh, let it go. That's a good idea. We'll maybe try that at the end. What a difference it makes when, when the air is put into the balloon, it becomes useful, doesn't it? Now it's pretty. Now we know there's a party. Now we, we know that that's what that was for our lives are like like that our lives are so much like that we're actually flat there's nothing inside us to jesus breathes new life in us and changes everything and we become what we were supposed to become this balloon was never supposed to stay in a packet it was never to stay hung up in walmart downs wherever It was made for a purpose, and so were you and I. And you see, when Jesus come in, comes in, he liberates us. So he releases us, why? You're right. He releases us. Wow. That worked better here than it did in the house. Because it sort of just went... He releases us to be free. He liberates us. Jesus gives us life and more than we could dream of. We can't even imagine what Jesus has planned for us. You know, on the 13th of July, 43 years ago, it's coming up, I met a young schoolgirl for the first time. On a street, no idea what was going to happen, but by God's grace, he put Jennifer into my life at that stage. That changed everything for me. She made me as sensible as I could be. 
And that's hard. I often say that she got the bad end of the deal. I got the good, good end. She has to put up with me. She gets second best. But God had a purpose in our meeting that we, we, we didn't know at that stage. She was only three years of age when I met her on the street, by the way, 43 years ago. But today we live in a world that is lost, that's in turmoil. We don't know what our purpose is. There's chaos. Leaders and people believe they can see a way out of it, but we continue to be in darkness until we let Jesus and we let his light come shining through. John 12, 46 says, I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. So how's your light shining today? Are you shining bright? Do you feel that? Do you feel that Jesus has come into the world as a light and he has transformed and changed you so that when we walk into a room and into, think about this, this is what we're supposed to be. You know those little fireflies that, that you see at night and they're, they're beautiful floating about? I don't know whether they bite, do they? No. So they're beautiful. Okay. And, and they're flying up and you go, ah. You see a difference when, 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 when they come past. You see the light shining from them. That's what we're supposed to be. No matter where we, we go, we're supposed to walk into a room and shine the light of Jesus. Do you ever think of that? You're like a glow stick for Jesus. I wish I looked like a glow stick. <laughs> or you could be a glow blob for Jesus. Doesn't matter. But we're supposed to walk in and transform things and change things. Why? Because Jesus did it to us. He transformed us. He changed us. It's time for you and me to be shining lights in the world. When we follow Jesus, who is the light of the world, we're supposed to become like him, right? We're supposed to become like Jesus, to become this light of the world. So how brightly are we shining? How brightly are we shining for God? Stop for a moment. Just think about that. And just think, where would you be this morning without God's amazing grace? I know without his amazing grace, I would not be here. I know that for certain. Where would you be without God's grace? Are we thankful for the blessings that God has given us in life? This has been a hard time for people to say to God, thank you for your blessings. But this is the time when we should be lifting our voices and saying, thank you, God, for being with us, for staying with us. Can I encourage you just to pause every day to say three small words? Thank you, Jesus. If we started every day with a thank you to him, I remember um, a relative of mine late on in his years, and I said, how's your day going? He says, it's great, because I woke up this morning. It's great. I'm still alive. You know, thankful for the small things in life. Thankful that God gives us prayer. Thankful that God is there with us. If we started with these three little words which have a big meaning, it would transform our days because you'd start off in thanksgiving rather than starting off and thinking, oh my word, what have I to do today? See, there's a big difference. God's grace is real and powerful in our lives. And Jesus takes us from lost to found, from no hope to a bright future, from death to new life in Christ, from being blind and not knowing where we're going to have eyes that are open to the possibilities of what's around us. 
He takes us from feeling unloved to loved. He takes us from nothing to give us spiritual riches. And he takes us from disgrace to grace. And I have to ask him, why, Lord? Why? And the answer is because of Jesus. Because he loves us so much, he was willing to give Jesus for us. The grace of God will never run out. Can we share that grace? Can we be that light? Can we make that difference? Because, my friends, if you can tell me today that Jesus has changed your life, then he has poured his grace in. And he wants you to pour that grace back out to others. Let's pray. Let's take a moment just to think about that. Almighty God, thank you for never stopping believing in me. Sometimes it's hard to grasp how much you love me, care for me, and want my life to be better. Lord, I need more of this reality in my life. I need to understand more how much you pour your love over me. How much you help me grow. Help me to seek comfort in turning to you for guidance. And while we may be scared to leave behind our way of doing things, we know that your way is ultimately better. Help me to grow confident in that. And dear Heavenly Father, I know, I know it's a time for change. Give us the courage to keep going. Don't let us be afraid to let go and let you be God. Help us to believe that when one door closes, another opens. Because you are a faithful and loving God. Help us to remember the words from Hebrews 13 and 8. But I am assured that no matter what, there is one thing that never changes. Jesus Christ who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So Lord, today we thank you for holding on to us through all the different seasons of our lives, through all the changes and all the things that we have been through. We thank you that you are a faithful God. We thank you that you're a loving God. And we thank you that by your grace, Jesus changes everything. Keep changing us. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. Amen. Let's stand and let's worship. This God that never changes, this God that is always there for us, there's only one thing that we can do, and that's to praise his name. We, we need to be able to praise his name. And this song's called, Oh, Praise the Name. So as we sing it, sing it from our hearts. It says, I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. This is our God who loves us unconditionally. Let's sing it out like we mean it, like it comes from the depths of our heart. Jesus does not mind if you sing out of tune 
He just wants to hear your praises. Oh, praise the name. forever we are transformed we are a new creation and we can praise your name transformed. Know that you live in God's grace. 
go and share it with others, shine a light, make a difference. And could I ask if when you're leaving, unless you need to use the elevator, if you would go out by this door, that would be wonderful. Um, it just helps us because we have clean all down around the other doorway. Also, we have our offering boxes at the back. But let's go and offer our lives to him. In Jesus' name, have a great, great week. See you next week.